Will ChatGPT replace Google as the primary search engine, and if so, when? Over the past three years, OpenAI has risen rapidly. And when you look at all of Google's flop, like Bard, which failed, somebody put the search term cheese not sticking to pizza into Google search. They got this response. You can add about one eighth cup of non-toxic glue to the sauce to give it more tackiness. You might have thought that Google is dying and that in this new era, OpenAI will dominate. However, a few weeks ago, Google made a lot of announcements during the Google I.O. with their new video model VO3, Gemini integrated across their products and other announcements that are shaking the current AI leaders to their core. Is Google set to dominate the AI space? Today, we're going to break down their plans and see how Google intends to win this AI race. And the first part of this plan is embedding AI into every product they offer. Unlike other companies trying to create standalone AI products and platforms, Google is playing a much more sophisticated and longer game here. They're not asking you to change how you work or the tools that you already rely on and use every single day. Think about it, your phone, your email, your search engine, and all of the apps that you are using for work, all becoming intelligent simultaneously. They are not just building an additional AI tool that you need to discover and then learn how to use. They are redesigning the entire digital workspace and our ways of working. When you're using these external tools like ChatGPT, you need to manually copy and paste, import files and documents. And Google, on the other hand, has created a seamless AI ecosystem. You can ask Gemini to draft, summarize and manage your emails directly inside Gmail, generate documents in Google Docs and classify your data on Sheets. You can also combine all of these tools together. But what if I tell you that Google did way more than that? They allow you also to create gems inside Gemini. Gems are the Google equivalent of OpenAI GPDs. The difference? First, it's free. And second is that you can use them directly inside Google's product suite. Companies wanting to automate their customer support and maintain their brand voice across their entire team can now create and use a customer support gem. Giving the entire FAQ as knowledge, this gem can be used directly inside Gmail and shared across the entire customer support team or organization. This is a simple example and the possibility here are endless. The next product that not many people are talking about is Workspace Flows, which allows you to easily automate tasks within the Google ecosystem. Here is where you get truly exciting for businesses. Imagine creating a workflow where after a lead completes a Google form, a specific document is automatically generated using a custom gem and then immediately emailed to them. You are limited to the Google ecosystem here, but imagine if Google opens this to other businesses in the future. Now that we saw how Google integrated AI into their product, they didn't stop there. They also integrated AI into their core business and use case, search. They first added AI overviews, which is a new way to answer any queries. After started using ChatGPT, people are more likely to type longer queries and want the answers directly instead of having a list of multiple links to search from. And on top of that, Google also announced Circle to Search, which allows multimodal searches on the fly by only circling items directly from an Android phone. They have also introduced an exciting tool called Notebook LM. What's powerful about it is that it allows anyone to import their own documents, like your research notes, articles, or project files, and create a personalized AI model that's grounded in your specific information. A fantastic use case for Notebook LM is to repurpose content. For example, you can upload the transcript of a podcast and Notebook LM can help you quickly analyze the core insights and structure them into a compelling lead magnet, like an email series for your audience. Another good use case is whenever you have specific documents you want to ask questions about, you can simply create a project and directly ask your questions. All of this is really beneficial for Google as they can collect data on how everyone uses their product to make the AI even smarter in the future. As powerful as all of that sounds, Google knows it can't do this AI revolution alone. That's why they are opening the gates to developers, companies, and even other AI agents to build on their tools. And that's the next part of their plan, creating an AI ecosystem for developers and builders. And here we will start with the lowest level LLMs. They are the brains behind any AI systems. They've got a whole family of their Gemini LLMs. We are talking here about Ultra, Pro, and Nano. Now, why does this matter? Because by building their own LLMs from the ground up, Google holds all of the power. It's not just about raw power and efficiency. It's also about baked in security, adherence to ethical guidelines and total control over how these models evolve. This means they can perfectly integrate their core principles and optimize these models across their entire hardware and software ecosystem. This strategy is actually pretty similar to what Apple does with the iPhone. This tight focus allows them to create an operating system and apps that are meticulously designed for their specific device. The result is a user experience that's often more efficient and robust 
than what you can find with Android, simply because they control the entire stack. Google is doing exactly the same, but for AI. But here's where it gets even more exciting. LLMs are powerful on their own, but what really unlocks their potential is when they are connected to tools. And Google has taken a massive step here by integrating something called MCP, which are invented by their competitors, Entropic. And they embed that directly into the SDK for their Gemini models. So if you haven't heard of MCP, it's a game changer for developers. Instead of spending a lot of time building and adding individual tools one by one, MCP lets an LLM or an AI agent directly access a whole suite of tools from a specific company or website. Let's use an example, Booking.com. They could set up an MCP server that exposes all of their functionalities, searching for hotels, booking rooms, checking booking details, you name it. Once an LLM or an AI agent connects to Booking.com MCP, it instantly has access to all of those tools. But Google didn't just do that. They also created an agent-to-agent -agent protocol. This allows different AI agents to communicate with each other in a much easier, more standardized way. And here's the thing. A2A is framework agnostic. That means that any AI agent, regardless of the platform or framework it was built with, can talk to another. Picture this. Booking.com creates its own AI agent that can communicate with other agents using this A2A protocol. Now you could build an AI agent for your own travel agency. That could then directly communicate with the Booking.com agent to handle all of the accommodation bookings. And what if your travel agency agent also needs to book flight? Well, then it could also connect to, let's say, a Kayak.com AI agent through the same exact protocol. It's essentially a common language a set of rules that lets different AI agents talk, share information and collaborate on tasks. Instead of you manually copying information from one AI to another, they can now chat amongst themselves and get things done. Right now, everyone is talking about AI agents. Companies like Make.com, NA10, and Relevance AI are building them. And developers are creating them in code with frameworks like Crew AI or LangGraph. And guess what? Google just released their own take on this. And they released their own ADK. It's called ADK for Agent Development Kit. This means that anyone can now create agents and connect those agents built with other frameworks like Crew AI directly into the Google ecosystem. It's all about making it easier for everyone to build and connect those powerful new AI tools. And there is a lot to say here about A2K, so I will make a separate video about it soon. So don't forget to subscribe. On top of A2A, MCP and ADK, Google also added an AI agent section to its cloud marketplace. It lets developers publish and promote their own agents. It is then easier for users to find and deploy existing AI solutions. There is also Agent Space and Agent Garden that are dedicated environments for developing and running AI agents with Vertex AI. During the last Google I.O., Google also introduced Firebase Studio, which allows building apps and websites with AI, and this is a direct competitor to tools like Cursor, Windsurf, or Loverboard. So as we see, Google is really empowering developers to build on their platform directly. But what if I told you that that's not it? To truly lead in AI, Google recognized the need to control the entire foundation. That means also controlling the hardware. This helps Google to remain fully independent and that's what we will talk about in the last part of this video. If you were to build the most advanced supercomputer on the planet, you could buy the best of the shelves parts from different brands like Nvidia graphic cards, for example. What if I give you a ridiculous amount of money, let's say $100 billion, and with that, you could go a step further and decide to hire a team of smart people and build your own parts that are the most powerful. This will then give you an edge against anyone and make you completely independent. And this is exactly what Google is doing with their TPU V5P. These TPUs are specifically designed for AI and specifically designed for Google's Gemini LLMs. On top of that, Google is building the network and the AI infrastructure and offering AI within Google Cloud with their massive global network of data centers and super fast internet connections. And this infrastructure is available inside Vertex AI. Vertex AI lets developers access all that raw processing power without needing to be an expert in hardware or network management. Instead of having to build their own AI infrastructure from scratch, which believe me is incredibly expensive and complex to do, companies can just plug into Google Cloud and use Vertex AI to train and deploy their own AI models. This means even small businesses can build really sophisticated AI solutions powered by Google's cutting-edge hardware simply by using their cloud services. We saw in this video Google plans to dominate the AI race, and to do that they control the entire process. They also created an entire ecosystem for developers to easily build and deploy on their platform with frameworks like Agent Development Kit, integrating Anthropic MCP, and building an A2A protocol. They offer all of these services in Google Cloud Platform with Vertex AI, Agent Marketplace, and Agent Garden. Finally, they are building the hardware to run AI and also the infrastructure and data centers to host, deploy, and scale AI in the entire world. 
So yes, Google may have been late to the party, but now they are hosting it. Now, if you're a business owner considering using AI, whether for streamlining internal processes or creating features that your user will love and you're not sure where to begin, click the link below to have a chat and let's explore how AI can take your business to the next level. Otherwise, you can also join my school community where I build AI solutions live and where you will find a bunch of tutorials and fully built AI solutions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.